<laughs> but let's switch gears. I know Gino's trying to call back in. Um, I will text him while one of you guys talk and tell him he, we didn't just cut him off. Uh, he, he wanted to join the conversation. Let's talk about um, pretty historic yesterday, um, the vote in uh, the U.S. Congress. John, why don't you give us your thoughts to start with? First of all, I'm... I'm Assume, I don't know what the Senate has done or if they've done it yet, but I presume it's going to pass. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I think this is a victory for Republicans that Biden blinked uh, after saying that there would be no negotiation. There was negotiation. What annoys me and uh, the fact that Alex Mooney, my representative, was the only representative from um, West Virginia, it, it, uh, Shelley Moore Capito and and um, oh, yeah, Joe Miller Manchin, too, right? And Carol Miller voted for um, for the, the the debt ceiling bill. Here's my problem: it's a really good bill, specifically for West Virginia. You know, we got we got the the pipeline issue has, has been resolved, and we've um, that's that's a lot of jobs, that's a lot of money, and I hear Alex Mooney's response to all of this, and obstructionism is not governance this is a good compromise we didn't hundreds of billions of dollars of um, yes hundreds of billions of dollars were were taken off the table the expansion of the IRS was slowed down we got the um, we got the pipeline that's been built let's take the victory and run with it the nature of compromise is that you don't get everything you want but I think if if you know Alex Mooney, you know who he is. I I don't think I expected him to vote for this. I mean, Alex has always been a very conservative. That this is who he is. He doesn't believe in expanding any spending. Um, I think he's very consistent. In, he's very you know, consistent in the way he votes. And he so did to, it with, to, uh, to be Aaron Trump, yeah, the Trump administration, he, 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 he didn't vote for absolutely. The, the, the he, that as well. He, uh, he will not compromise his beliefs. And I think to expect him to change now because he's running for Senate, I don't. I, I don't. I don't expect anybody to change. Yeah. I expect people to be held accountable. We've interviewed. I've interviewed Alex Mooney here. I don't know him yeah. at, at all. Um, and. If, multiple opportunities to to tell us what he would like to accomplish and i've heard let's stipulate just for the sake of argument let's stipulate that uh, donald trump was treated badly and that biden is something short of the best president we, we've ever had <laughs> but that's it there's there's the ranting about different elements of how president trump was treated badly but that's not a plan so here we have a compromise that actually accomplishes something it's far from what what the Republicans wanted, but it's also far from what the Democrats wanted. That's what governance is. We have to, I think, the Republicans... That's what governance should be. That's not what it is, though. Well, is this the... But is this... And is... My, my big question is, is this the right space in which there's negotiations that have to occur? I mean, we're talking about paying bills that have already been approved right. for expenses, and now you want to... You, why? I mean, why, why are we spending the money? Process? Why, yeah, why are we spending money that we don't have in the first place? Well, but that's, but that's doing this. Problem. But that's what that's what the House of Representatives is all about: is 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 passing bills that are budgets, and then that commits have we for good or budget? ill. Well, there's no, an no. omnibus bill, but I mean, but I mean, it's, but it's, there's commitments that the United States of America has made, and then it's up to the people of the United States to to pay those bills. The fact that there was a negotiation and that it was successful at all is a big victory. I, I think I think you're right there, but I think we still got to go back to the root of the problem, which is why are we spending money that we don't have and why is it growing all the time? Why can't we cut spending? I think, you know, I... I I don't think uh, I expected Alex to, to, to vote for this. I, I, I could see Shelley Moore uh, definitely negotiating and, and compromising. That's kind of, she's a negotiator. She, she got the pipeline for us. She, that's who she is. Um, but no, I, he, Alex would, would, would get hammered if he voted for this. I think I, it would be against everything that he, he stands behind, just yeah. from what I know about him. And th this is... Uh, the consequences of, of a default, it, it's not nothing. You know, it's incalculable. It, 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 the, the 
the hit to the stock market and people, you know, retirees' pensions and everything. It's just. And do we know when he voted? It could have passed, and he could have just been one of one of those token no votes too. It, it, it was not close. It was not close. It, it, yeah. it I mean, passed Demo- by a huge margin. Yeah, the Democrats came 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 with the Republicans on this. You know, we the United States is so bifurcated politically. You know, we got the hard right, the hard left, and nobody's listening to the middle. Well, we, does this does this counter that the fact that they were able to get a bipartisan? Yes, they've had two bipartisan uh, deals here recently. I, I think it, it's it's. And I look at the West Virginia House with the supermajority. I think it's a lot easier to get stuff done now that it's 50. And and the other thing I I was really struck by last night was we only have two representatives in West Virginia. That's right. Out of 400 and whatever it is. Wait, does it matter what? Anybody from West Virginia votes? Do we have any say? Sure, in the because we have two senators, just like two, everybody else. Yeah, the two senators, I, I can see, but it just made a made me, made me feel insignificant. Well, we used to have what five? Mm, yeah, we used to have more people. We used to have more people, and um, there's an easy way to get more representatives. We just got to get more people to come here. You know, with you, part of the problem, the, the as far as budgetary issues and, and such, when when the Democrats had everything. They had all the both houses, and they had the White House. They did what they did. You know, trillions of, of, of new dollars that went through. That's done. We claw that back by the Republicans now that they have a majority in the House. That they vote to change, you know, change, change the budgetary process, change the budgetary numbers. Here's the problem: there's only a four delegate or four representative majority. Why is that? We there's a problem with the Republican message that is preventing the landslide that everybody, you know, the, the red wave that everybody was, was projecting. And I think part of the problem is the lack of willingness to compromise, going to the mattresses on hard right issues. It's just not going to attract the independents. And, and that's, that's the only vote that counts now. You know, the R's are going to vote for R's, D's are going to vote for D's. It's the I's that we have to go for. And this kind of recalcitrance on the part of Alex Mooney, and I'm not just beating on him because they're, they're, people on the, on the left that do the same thing, AOC and what have you. It's, it's the recalcitrance that turns off the independence, I think. We have to, all of these people need to take a step away from themselves, not their principles necessarily, but their rhetoric and say, okay, this is better than nothing. But to, to push back again, John, I think at the national level, you need to look at this and go, at what point is enough enough? Well, how much debt... Do we want to, we're just going to do this again. It doesn't matter whether it's a Republican. It doesn't matter who's in charge, whether the president, yeah. Trump did it. The debt ceiling is going to keep going up. Right? Was, if you, if wasn't you, it Clinton the last president that had a balanced budget? Yes. I, I think, yeah. And we haven't even looked at it since. It's, it's not even a conversation. People, the regular people out there are not talking about, hey, we, our government doesn't even balance a budget. Well, my, if if... On the debt ceiling, if you buy a house or if you buy anything big and then you realize, wow, I overpaid for this, you don't fix it by not paying your mortgage. And that's no, you sell your house or or you do something. How are you going to do that? But the one thing you don't do is just stop paying the mortgage. In this case, the United States committed to more than they ever should have, in my opinion. I agree. You got to pay the bill. You can't just say, well, no, we're not going to do it. So, which is which is what the hard right Republicans were suggesting. But the fundamental issue is we're going to continue to spend money that we don't have. Correct. Not if we elect more people. Not, not more in, people. More Republicans. More people. Fis- which is what, fiscally. Which is why I think Alex's vote was what it was. He's standing on his principle that he's saying enough is enough. I know that we need to to raise the debt ceiling, but my vote morally is i cannot be behind it that's not who i ran as but morally and legally this isn't the time right well when is the time when we're putting we're cobbling together the budget 
you don't you don't fix it by re, by scuttling the entire economy right. on principle. It's just it's just silly. It's I like just not the, paying your bills that that you've I, our services you've already incurred to. And I'm I'm not arguing for, for or against. I'm just saying yeah. that there's a root problem here, and what we don't seem to ever attack the actual problem. We just keep kicking the can and. It'll come up again. Doesn't matter who's in charge. We will raise the debt ceiling again. It'll be some other tragedy that, that we have to spend money on. But it seems to me like this was a good deal. Um, there that, was some not according to a lot of and a lot of well a the Freedom Caucus of the of, and a lot of, of conservatives Republic. will say this is a bad deal. But obviously, I have nothing to do with this. But looking from the outside, I'm like it's better than what we've gotten before. I yeah. agree with that. But I, I applaud Alex for his no vote in this case. But you would have voted yes. You would have voted it, for it. Probably. I, you know, I'm not in that position. But um, I don't run on the, the fact that I am a Freedom Caucus, uh, anti-government. You know, that's not me. I, I'm more of a middle-of-the-road person who kind of balances on, on and takes in all the issues. For me, the... The good thing about this is that pipeline piece that kind of that, that's that's, for West that's Virginia, that put me over the top because I'm going, well, I'm getting something. And I look at I look at West Virginia and, you know, I, I don't always agree with with, with Senator Byrd's politics, but I look at West Virginia and what he did. Um, Senator Byrd got us a lot of good things in West Virginia. I mean, we got the IRS, we got the ATF, we Customs and Border Patrol in West Virginia. The National Conservation <laughs> Training Center? <laughs> National Conservation. Like, the man, uh, and I don't agree with how he did it or whatever. I understand the problems, but he got deals done, whether it was Republican, Democrat, whoever, and he made sure he got things for West Virginia. I think in this deal, West Virginia actually got something out of it. You know, that's going to be... The MVP pipeline opening up is going to infuse a lot of money locally as well as a tax base for the for your local county. Uh, yeah, county when you look at, uh, at at energy in, in West Virginia, I don't pretend to be an expert. I, I know just enough to get in trouble. We obviously we are we have coal coal mines. We we get enough coal to, to supply West Virginia, and we're, we're great on our coal mines, but we don't have a lot of the, the, the gas uh, power plants, right? And we can't seem to get D.C. and the metro areas to buy our energy because we're not green enough. Well, this gas pipeline will actually end up helping us to actually sell to those markets and, and fund those markets, too. So I think that's fantastic. We what can what get do you our mean green out. enough? Like, like, you have to... They'll, they'll buy our coal if we also have another industry that's so less. So not necessarily buy our coal, but they'll buy our energy if we go down, if we had more gas um, power plants solar? Or, or solar or, or things like that. Well, that, we've got a solar plant coming to the Eastern Panhandle, so. We got uh, multiple, so, yeah. potentially multiple solar plants. So, but the issue we have is we can't get our gas out of West Virginia fast enough. So this pipeline is going to be huge for West Virginia. And I, again, I'm no, I'm no expert in this field. I just know enough to get in trouble. And you also, politically, you also have to consider what a loss this is for the hard left. I agree. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a real thumb in their eye. And that's probably another reason if I was in that position, I'd yeah. probably vote yes. Because yeah, I'd be like, yeah, which see again, you, AOC. And, and I want to make it clear, uh, Congressman Mooney, I don't know him, and this is, this is not... Uh, an assault against him. It's an assault against his vote, and it's for issues like this. Take the win. You get to say, look what I did, what, what I voted for in West Virginia. Now he has set himself up, right? Now he's going to be running for senator. He's setting himself up to be, this is the guy that wanted to deny West Virginia the pipeline. And the, I, I don't think that would be the message. I think the, the message would be, this is the guy who stood on his principles that he ran for, that he is consistently been behind for, for how, how long has he been? Eight, 12 years? I don't know. Eight uh, years, 12? 2000, was it 14? No, no, no. I no, think no, it was no, before no. that. Before that, it was 2012? Yeah, so I know, I mean, the, the man hasn't changed and he won't change. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think he could say, I ran 
And when he I'm does a conservative. Run, I'm a conservative. Here's my principles. Here's my, principles. I Here's my vote. I don't waver no matter who's dangling that fish in front of me. And I think a lot of people, especially on the right here in West Virginia, we, we are very conservative, will attack Shelley Moore for actually voting for this if she does. Because, you know, she... She will be attacked, yeah. but does she also get 70% of the ballot box? Well, she's very popular, right? She, she's very likable. And, I mean, there's new polling out. Uh, was it ECU had, had released a poll that has uh, Jim Justice beating Joe Manchin by 20 points yeah. and has Alex Mooney and 41% and Joe Manchin at 40%. So basically... A little closer. A little closer, but... And, well, we but haven't seen a campaign fact, yet, right? Well, the fact that they're even that close... Because Joe's a very popular senator. He's very popular. I mean, even though he's... But not is he about, still? Uh, I, well, yeah. He's very, he's very well liked amongst the state. I mean, he's a past governor. Um, I think he's still a formidable opponent. He's done. A, he's done a lot. I mean, you got to imagine he's interacted with a lot of people for a lot of years. He's had that that how thirty, forty years to develop personal relationships with people in a small state. So a lot of people feel like they know Joe Manchin on a very personal level, as they do with our governor, our current governor. He makes you feel like um, he's very relatable. He's, I mean, one of the most popular governors we've had. And, and, which mean, which was weird because it, it wasn't that arc that didn't appear that it was going to go that way. Yeah. And then it, he was very it's like he when was he underwater. When he, switched, when he switched to Republican and, you know, the, 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 the legislator t started changing the dynamics of no, the, the no, finances. That's not it. That's not no? it. Baby dog. Baby dog. <laughs> well, baby dog I've turned met, the I've met, I've met baby dog. Cute dog. Yeah, Very I, cute. I, 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 will, I will say <laughs> that. Um, I will say this about Jim. Um, I, I've met him a couple of times now. And I would... I. I would shudder to, to think of him in his 20s of how a, how big of a hulking man he is. He he makes you yeah. feel like a small person, like his hands engulf your hand. So. Right, yeah. You can see he was, why he was such a popular basketball player. <laughs> yeah, I can see. And, okay. and you know Supreme Court Justice Hutchinson? I think I met. He, you know how tall he is? He's, tall. he's as tall as, they were high school basketball teammates back wow. whenever it was. You could, And back then that was... They're, they're tall now. They were really tall back then. That must have been... I like to see the, the record of that basketball team because I, I was happened to be at a place where they were both at. They were in Justice Hutchins like, yeah, we played on this. We were high school basketball teammates. I'm like, wow. Just take the ball down, throw it up. And I'd like to see when the campaigning actually really starts with the polls, do because I think... Uh, I, I know the polling shows uh, Jim with a sizable lead but i think once the once the ads start and the actual campaigning starts um i'm not counting alex mooney out no, just yet i, I wouldn't think, either I, I, you got to think that everything's baked in right now with jim justice he he <clears throat> does he have any you have to ask yourself does he have any room to go up uh it, it'd be hard to think that he can go up any higher than he is now but he can only come down. And it is the, so to me, is the question is... For, yeah, for every vote Alex gets, Jim will, Jim will lose one. Yes. I mean, yeah. I don't, think, I don't think an Alex Mooney voter is going to be switched over to a Jim Justice voter, but I think the opposite can happen. Yeah, because it's all baked in with, with, yeah. with the governor because everything. I want to move back to uh, Senator Manchin. I read in the news this morning that apparently he's joining forces with the Republicans to pull back the um, tuition reimbursement plan from the Biden administration. This is one of several moves in the last few weeks where he's siding with the Republicans on issues. Is this, we talked about uh, Alex Mooney being a principled person. Is this an indication that of fewer principles? For Joe Manchin, I mean, to, to go from the hard left issues that he's voted for early in uh, the the Biden administration, the one point whatever trillion dollar thing, and and now well, I think he was, I think in that position he thought he was getting something. I thought he was getting something. Yeah, from but he was West taken. Virginia, and, and he was he was getting bamboozled. Yeah, I think was it the pipeline? Yeah. yeah, I think, and that didn't come about. So, but I think he's poised. You know, I mean. Somebody's got to run against Biden on the Democratic side. I think Joe... Joe you think he's going to throw in for uh, the presidency? Why not? He, he's in the perfect position to... I'm Except not, he can't win a 
the nomination for that party. He could win that nomination in the, in the Democratic. Oh, I think the Democrats are desperate to have another choice than Joe Biden. I mean, he's such, he's But it's not Joe Manchin. Frail. Oh, I don't know. They're I, not I, that mad at him. <laughs> well, well why, they Joe are Manchin's, that mad at, at, Joe, at Joe Biden. They are, but, but not enough to elect Joe Manchin. Why him. not? Why specifically? I, I, I'm not, I, I think because he's too, he's too centrist. He's too he's but, too modern. He's seen as uh, in, in their I party. Think that's is, what we need. I think well, America is hungry for well, as a Republican. Yeah. Of course, that's what we need. You know, no, we can't yeah. elect our guy. We want we want somebody <laughs> want close to us. But, or hey, we want somebody from West Virginia. That'd be great. Well, too. that would be great. I yeah, mean, fantastic. And that would be interesting to see uh, if, if somebody because we are a hard hard red state but it would be interesting to see if, if somebody like joe manchin threw his hat in the race like that well I th and the reason why i say that he can't win the democrat nomination is because i think that there's that no labels party the third party movement that would fit him better for a run for president third parties don't have a chance they don't no, I but agree with john i just i mean you you have to, a third party has to start in a local election. All elections are local in my mind. It needs to start from the ground up, and they just don't have that. And at the national level, all a third party does is torpedo hey. one or the other major party. Maybe that's the point. If, if you look at the poll numbers, if you're Joe Manchin, and you're looking at the poll numbers, and you say, well, I can't win this race, what can I do? He can win, he can win the race the Senate on the Dem. Oh, well, I, I don't think Joe thinks he's going to lose. I, I don't, I mean, he's been, he, he would never say to anybody in public, I think I'm going to lose, so I'm going to run somewhere else. Um, he, don't count him out just no. yet. I mean, even against Jim or Alex, he, he's still Joe Manchin. <laughs> he, he has, he was close against uh, Marcy, but it was still a pretty substantial victory in in a year where, the red wave did happen. He still won. Anyone Jefferson County? Anyone Jefferson County? <laughs> so uh, you've got it. You you can't count them out. I think like what John's saying, the red wave from the last uh, national election didn't happen. I, I've got my thoughts on that. But um, okay, I what are still, your thoughts on that? Well, I, I think it was all hype and uh, the red waves coming. And the red wave the, the, was like. The wolf has come and the sky is falling, the sky is falling, and it was all hype. Uh, and I think the media played a, a very large role in, in saying that there was a giant red wave without any actual statistics to say this is what's happening. I think, you know, as polarizing as, as Trump was, um, I don't think he helped in that, uh, in that election. I... So, so we, we haven't talked about this, but Ron DeSantis getting in the race. <laughs> Speaking of Trump, um, Ron DeSantis is a, I think, is good for the party, and wh whether he wins or not, because his structure and organization that he's bringing to this primary, and he's already talking about they need to harvest, you know, get people out harvesting ballots and do mail ins, and. Touching voters on a personal level instead of whole, you know, kind of. Yeah. A, I think, I think, that's, that's I think he's the only one that can really debate with Trump. To I'd, I'd be eager to see that, um, and I, I'm also intrigued by uh, Tim Scott too. I think that's kind of absolutely. I think they both add. Yeah, a I, think, lot. I think it nice makes it interesting. I don't think it should be a runaway. Hey, one one guy. Oh, you want them to work for it, and, and I even want, <clears throat> even though I endorsed uh, Donald Trump, I voted for him. Um, I still want to see an actual race of this. Mm -hmm. uh, that speaking on the issues, not just, and I, it, um, I like to see the platform laid out. Last week, maybe it was week before, the Friday gang here was very dismissive of Ron DeSantis as a candidate, that he can't possibly win. I keep, it was right after he did the, the Twitter rollout, which was what it was. Um, I think DeSantis has a great message and frankly, a great record you know the, his his stance during covid and 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 the left is so afraid of him yes which makes him even well, more intriguing yes. but if, i have to cut the conversation off guys because okay. i'm afraid our guests have arrived for the next segment so All we right. have to take a break so and welcome back to eastern pan Am talk we had to kick colin out he wasn't doing a good job so <laughs> I, I kicked him out we had a great conversation today um i, I was very interested that last uh, segment i want to thank matt and john uh we kind of sold all the world's issues there um, I'm joined by my co-hosts, 
Mr. Matt Harvey, Jefferson County prosecuting attorney. Welcome back, John. Oh, Matt, sorry. <laughs> oh, good, good. we were doing so good. We were, we were. No, thank, uh, good morning. Good to be back. And award-winning author John Gilstrap. Welcome back, John. Good morning. John is going to introduce our next guest we have in studio with us. Uh, Kathy and Donna, and they're from, John? They are from the Animal Welfare Society of Jefferson County, and we're, going, we're here to talk about puppies, right? And, 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 <laughs> puppies, and puppies and grown dogs. We'll take dogs of any size and variety, and we hope they all come to the Bark in the Park. So uh, tell us about, well, first of all, tell us about the Animal Welfare Society of Jefferson County. Is it, is it what I would call the shelter? It is a shelter. We're a no-kill shelter. We're located off Old Lee Town Pike near the Jefferson County Fairgrounds. And we have been in operation since 1952. And for those of you who aren't good at math, that's 71 years. Wow. Um, so how do the dogs get to you? Is this when when there's a dog wandering around, they call the, 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 the dog catcher. It's not what they're called anymore. But is that is that how they get to you? Animal, animal control. control. Animal there. control. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, yes, there is an animal control facility that is run by the county, which is located very close to our our facility um, but we also have people surrender their dogs to us um, and bring strays into us that they have found so they can come to us from a variety of places and we also will take dogs from animal control which is a kill shelter so in fact that's why the animal welfare society was started because in 1952 the county facility only took adult dogs they didn't take puppies they didn't take cats so they started the shelter then to house all of the other animals that had a need and, and you house dogs and cats we house dogs and cats and ferrets and no ferrets no bunnies nothing like that <laughs> right. right now just dogs and cats but of all ages so you are here to promote the bark in the park the bark in the park what is that it's our 15th year of doing this well we missed a couple of years because of covid um but this is just a day for dogs to bring their owners to the park we only the only reason we invite these people is because the dogs need transportation <laughs> okay uh, if they could get there on their own they'd be welcome to come um, but it's a day for people to enjoy with their dogs uh, we have games and activities uh, for them to do we have an interactive dog walk which is a place where the dogs can dumpster dive for treats and a pool of toys and baseballs uh, they can try to walk the plank and test their skills at balance they can try weave poles if they've never done that before and we have a lot of other activities going on we have a bunch of contests um, we can test their ability to uh, should we try them on the Puppuccino? You guys are new. You, we were here last year and did the Puppuccino Challenge. Puppuccino Challenge. Oh, we should definitely do that with oh, these you're two. Gonna maybe, do it. Maybe, I maybe a competition between the uh, two of them, uh, and I'll judge. Oh, is this oh, involved yeah. caffeine? <laughs> yeah, is this involved this caffeine? Uh, whipped cream. <laughs> whipped cream. This is one of our most popular games. We uh -oh. do this quite and often. Wait a minute. So, are, do we have... We have are we, can, are we back up on? We're yeah. only on radio right now. No, we we're are, on TV. We are we're, back. we're back up on TV. Yeah. So we got our internet back. Okay, right well, in the that's middle good. Of break. So right. yeah, I think uh, the two of you should definitely do this. Yes. Right. I, I think I, so too. I just I'm happen, I happen to be allergic. I'm game. I'm not wearing a suit. Now, how this <laughs> I have to go to court later. How it works at the Bark in the Park uh -huh. is that the dog challenges his owner to a contest. <laughs> okay. To have a little cup of whipped cream, and they're each given the owner is given two cups okay. one for himself one for the dog and it's to test to see who has the quicker liquor <laughs> quicker liquor <laughs> how many liquor. humans have actually beaten their dog surprisingly quite a few interesting yeah. yes I think I could. I think I could beat my dog Monroe. You think you, you could? Think so? I think I could. I he's, think my he's... dog would eat that cup. This is dog, dogs have a tendency to want to look at it and sniff it first, and then they'll take That's a true. small taste with their tongue. Unless they're familiar with whipped cream, like my dog, all I have to do is move the whipped cream container in the refrigerator and. Yeah, once they know it. what it is, it's, and, it's yeah. game, right? It's yeah, like, then it's all it's over. Like the then you have no chance. The human has no chance if the dog is well familiar. So with for cream. bragging rights. Yeah. So for I just want to go on the record to say that this is the worst thing for a man with a mustache. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 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 Make sure we get all of this recorded. 
All right, are you guys ready? New open, right? Okay. Uh, Wait a minute, do we have to, like, take our hands off? Or? Oh, no, no, you can, you you can, can, can hold it. Hands. Clearly, can you, you can <laughs> use your hand and hold it in your hand, and then you have to lick it and see how quickly you can do it. And this is between the two of you, no dogs okay. involved. But if one of you wants to get down on all fours, you know. <laughs> that's, that's a different we're, show. We're, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> so, I'll do three, two, one, go. There you go. Three. You three, two, one, go. Start licking. Start licking. Let's see who has the quicker liquor. Who's going to lick for... Oh, I think we have a winner already. Matt Harvey, oh, the king of the liquor. Way to go. I was afraid he was going to get it on his nice mustache. Nice job, buddy. <laughs> That's pretty good. I'm a little disappointed that, that I couldn't get it in two licks. Right? <laughs> well, I think last time we were here, someone just went... Yeah. Uh, oh, someone tried yeah, to do good this. Yeah, yeah. Who was, who was here last time? Yeah. Do you remember? Was it wrong? Uh, he was a city councilman. Oh. Yeah. That did well, that. Yeah. H.D. Boyd, maybe? Well, ha so next year, put me and that we're person. Gonna, we're going to have to go. We're going to have there to find the, the, the lick off. I think what we'll do, Matt, guys. next year, remind us, and, and we'll bring Matt's dog in. And we'll actually okay. do a quick Have a dog. Record. Maybe I'll bring my dog. Yeah. Uh, my oh, dog just oh, eat the I'll bring whole thing. I'll bring yeah. mine. Monroe is a, is a, my dog is a rescue dog. And oh, he's good. also uh, from Berkeley County Animal Control. It's when I got him in 2010. And he goes to work, and we use them to comfort children. Oh, cool. oh that's when wonderful. When they're at the office having to, you know, to talk about uncomfortable things. And, right. Um, also, he's good with adults, too. So he, he gives, brings a lot of comfort, and he brings me comfort. Does he go to the office with you? Yes. Well, that's cool. Yes. Just right. about every day. Not, not, yeah. some, some days my wife's off. He stays yeah. home. He takes it. We you can give him a little. He's day like off. thirteen, right? But yeah, now. he yeah. has. Oh, a, wow. Yeah, he yeah. he has he has like a place to. He's got his routine where he goes there around go. to different uh, desk and people give him treats and he's got a name on the board where we would check him in and. <laughs> so what does he it cost for the humans to take their dogs to the bark in the park? I'm sorry. What, what does it cost for the humans to take their it, dogs? There to? is a ten dollar registration fee okay. per dog. And, that's and all are there any to. restrictions on types of dogs or things that your dogs must have to come to a dog in the park? No, they park? should be current on all their vaccines. Okay. And clearly we don't want dogs who are not properly socialized yeah. <laughs> because we don't want to have dogs arguing. And they're all on a leash, right? All yes, on, leash. all on a leash, yeah, yeah. yes. Although this year we will be offering something new and different to the Bark in the Park, and that is a demonstration by... Um, Who's doing it, Donna? Three, three, three Dog Farm. Yeah. Three Dog Farm. And they're going to be doing a luring demonstration for us. And if, for those of you who don't understand what that is, there is some kind of mechanical wire or device that's rigged up with a foxtail or just a piece of cloth or something that runs really fast in a straight line and then possibly takes a sharp right turn. And the dogs are then allowed to chase that around in a little circle or square and dogs just go crazy for it if you've got a dog who's one of those dogs who chases everything that it sees in sight chases cats chases butterflies chases bugs around the yard this is definitely what you want to do and the demonstration will actually start for that at 11 o'clock but it will go on all day and people can invite their dogs to try luring it's a very popular activity, and there are contests all and over the And is this country. something that three, what you say, three dog, three? Three dog farm. Three dog farm, is that something they do as a business? They, they, they're teaching? Three dog farm is actually in the area. They are a boarding and daycare facility. Oh, okay. So I, I'm not 100% sure if they do luring on a daily basis with their dogs, but their slogan is a place where dogs can be dogs. So they allow nice. the dogs to interact on the, you know, the daycare dogs and the boarding dogs to interact and have fun. All right. <clears throat> These guys have big dogs. I have a 15-pound just little bundle of love, <laughs> right? So how, what are the precautions? Dogs are dogs. And, and, and Kimber, my dog, thinks all the big dogs are her best friend. They don't of always course. agree. So how do you prevent the, the fights and, and that sort of thing and the interaction of dogs? Uh, that's a really good question. I'm not sure that I'm qualified to answer that. I'm not really a dog trainer. I'm Well, at the park. Are, at you, the is park, there a place for little dogs to play with each other and big dogs to play with each other? Well, at the park, you're going to have your dog on a leash at mm -hmm. all times, you know, except for if they're going to be doing the luring demonstration, and that would be one dog at a time. Um, but we pretty much are going to rely on the people who... Knew, 
own their dogs, to control their dogs and be aware of the fact that, hey, look, you know, not all dogs get along with other dogs. So that's up to the owners. Yeah, you know, I think <laughs> communication between the owners is the key with there. Any, anytime you take your dog to right. a dog park, you need to be able to Yeah, and yeah. unfortunately, you know, there are always going to be people who are oblivious to what their dog's doing, and they may be looking at one of the vendor's wares or something and not... So what kind of vendors do you have? Uh, we have a lot of different vendors there this year. Um, and most of them will be offering arts and crafts type items, some of which are related to dogs, but not all. Um, we will also be having a professional photographer there who is willing to take a, one photo of every participant. Um, and send that to them with their with their dog with their dog yeah. well, well the, their, their choice they get a oh, photo whether yeah. it's of their dog or themselves with with and their human is what you with, really need with yeah <laughs> yeah it's up to the dog so matt here's the question when well, you, I, when you send your when it, you send your christmas good. card out is your dog on it yes okay absolutely good for you no question it's part of the he family, was the right? best man in my wedding oh and dana Knowles <laughs> made him a little a little, little bow tie, tie collar and little cufflinks and I, I have a video of him like he was he had the how was, was his kid. speech <laughs> it was it was rough, <laughs> it was rough. <laughs> Great Great one. Nice i got job. that i saw what you did there <laughs> it's just the kind of toast you want he couldn't embarrass you right <laughs> <laughs> if he could talk he could he certainly could he's saying enough of me um, so i presume this is your biggest fundraiser for the year is that that kind of the reason you do it well no Okay. It is definitely not our biggest fundraiser. Uh, we hope to at least raise enough funds to cover this, but this okay. is a day for people to enjoy with their dogs. It's really all about the dogs. Um, our largest fundraiser of the year is the event that we hold at the uh, Charlestown Casino, which is done in uh, Is that October. more of a gala? Yeah, it's a, yes. Okay. It's a Halloween oh, festival. Nice. People come dressed up, and it's a live auction and dinner. Um, and that's probably where we raise the most money. We have several fundraising events throughout the year. We do flower sales at both Mother's Day and Easter. Uh, we also hold some low-cost rabies clinics. We do that once or twice a year, once in the spring and once in the fall. And those are local. And, you know, anyone who has a cat and a dog, you know, is invited to come. And I will say right now... Um, the last one we had in the spring, we had a little bit of mix-up, and we couldn't do cats. And I right. apologize to anyone who happened to have brought a cat um, and wasn't able to be vaccinated. But um, we try to do those at least twice a year, and that's at a really low cost compared to what you would get at the vet. So give us the date again and the times. The date is June the 3rd. Registration begins at 9.30, and the event officially starts at 10 o'clock with a blessing of the dogs. Jefferson County Community Ministries will be there, um, and they will bless the dogs, and then we will start with our activities. And it goes on until 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and we're hoping it doesn't get too hot. And do you have a limit on the amount of contestants or registrants? No. So how would somebody register or get... Do they have to pre-register or they just show up? They do not have to pre-register. They show up. And when they show up and register, we'll have a tent set up with volunteers. And they will sign a waiver form and register. And they'll get a goodie bag. And then they can start the activities. Is there a Facebook page or a website where they can go to see the itinerary? There is. And that would be awsjc.org. Um, and... You can also see the uh, list of activities and the program, which will tell you exactly what time to show up. Most of the games are going to be t taking place around 12 o'clock. We have best dressed, best kisser, and that would be <laughs> the dog kissing the humans. Okay. And I will say right now, if anybody doesn't want their dog to kiss them, I will volunteer myself. <laughs> I am the MC of the event. And I'm happy to let a dog just kiss me all over the place. All right. You've also got the best dog trick. Yes. So going back into history, what was the best, best dog trick that you've seen? Oh, my. Donna, help me here. I don't know. The memorable thing was the uh, gentleman who did the obedience and had his dog there and the dog... We had pictures of him. He sat on a trash can on top of a trash can for like forever. He he was, I think, a working dog. Yeah, I think he, he was, was a military dog. Trained. And that dog knew his spot. You know, when you if you know anything about dogs and you train them to know a spot that they go to mm -hmm. within your home normally. Oh. And he would say, Go to your spot and that dog would just 
run across the entire park, you know, no leash, and just go to his spot. <laughs> he was pretty amazing. So but, anything else you want to add, ladies, before we let you go? Uh, just please come out and bring your dogs and enjoy a great day, fun activities. Well, thank you for joining us. Appreciate it, uh, I was going to ask if, if w are you accepting donations, monetary, Always. and also... <laughs> Always. Okay, always. and people can drop those off at your facility on Lee Town Road, like they bleach, they paper can. towels, There's a food. wish list on they, the website. If you check out the website, awsjc.org, it's always listed on there what we need, and we always need volunteers, and that's usually coordinated through the shelter manager. So, yes, we always need those things. We'll take anything we can get. And money, yes, please Always. Give it to Cash us. is cool, right? Yes, absolutely. Yep. <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining us. We're going to take our last break, and then we'll go to final thoughts with the guys. I appreciate you coming in, and thank you very much. Thanks thank for you for allowing us to be here. We're in the final segment of a Thursday, and then uh, tomorrow will be the the regular old cantankerous men show, uh, <laughs> which is like what, what, I, what I like to call it. And hopefully they're listening because uh, I'm going to give them hell tomorrow. So, uh, my co I want to thank Matt Harvey for coming in and John Gilstrap for helping me for the day. I think we had a great conversation. Thoughts, guys? I, I'm very pleased that I was able to win the licking contest in front of. You're, you're not getting a medal, Matt. We're not, we're not getting you a medal or the a trophy. The sugar content was its own reward. Yeah. <laughs> John, are you, are you going to be bow out as the, as the good loser, or are you going to call Oh, I, I concede. I concede. Can see, okay. yeah, apparently, Matt has a have point on his tongue that he, that he can get the corners at the yeah. bottom. I could get the big lump in the middle, but chasing the corners. I speak with a forked tongue, so I've been told. You're a lawyer. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that explains it, it all. these types of competitions. <laughs> so let's change. Get, Matt, what, what is the career path for a prosecuting attorney? Is this something that I know you enjoy it? You know, I've talked uh, a couple of times. Yeah. Um, I know you enjoy it. But I is, do. The, is there, is the next thing to be a judge or is it to be something else? What, I, what's I think the, that's, well, I think that's individual. Okay. Uh, for, I'm looking at Colin. Yeah. And for his mother. Right. It, it was the step that she felt that she was a great prosecutor by the way because i presume you came out of college you wanted to be a lawyer you were a lawyer and then you were like hey i want to be a prosecutor Tell yeah I, well when i was in law school i did not want to be anything i didn't want to have anything to do with criminal law okay and then i actually got a job in the real world and okay. i was doing what i thought i was i would like to do and it didn't um it didn't suit me and and just it was a great surprise that i ended up becoming an assistant prosecutor and then ultimately the prosecutor but also did some defense work in there as well and and the thing that i didn't think that i would like is is what i've dedicated my life to because i i really enjoy it yeah and it's the there's a lot of really so, good that you can do in this position so when you're a prosecute like as the prosecuting attorney you're obviously an elected official that's right correct are you is it more admin or are you still actually physically doing cases it's more admin than you expect. Right. And in Jefferson County, there's a civil division as well. I spend quite a bit of time doing research and, and helping with that and looking at those civil issues. Um, I, I do get to go to court some. Right. It's not as much as I would prefer, but... But if you choose to, you could. I absolutely yes. Okay. I get to pick the cases that I... There you go. <laughs> so there was a couple on. of pieces of legislation um, that came through that I, I know you had interest in one i was very proud to to actually say i think it's 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 passed and signed was the uh, a baby is considered in a dui uh a case is considered a, a, a person a person so i thought that was a, a key piece of legislation that passed in this last one but you had something that you brought to our attention can you elaborate on that because i know it, it didn't get through but obviously we want, we want to get it to the finish line. Absolutely, and it involves right now uh, the negligent homicide, which is often referred to as vehicular manslaughter. It's when someone is operating a vehicle in an extremely negligent manner, and they cause the death of another. In West For Virginia, instance, drag racing. Drag racing. Um, 120 it, miles down the, down the interstate. Pa passing cars on the shoulder. Gotcha. You know, you, you know, at 120 miles an hour, and you and you or you come through a parade route and that's been blocked off and you 
crane into the crowd yeah. and you kill people. Yeah. It's it's a misdemeanor in West Virginia, and it carries no matter the outcome. So if well, I it, roll there's only my, one outcome is yeah, someone if, dies. Yeah, if I roll my car into fifteen people, it's still a misdemeanor. Well, in, unless there's intent, right? No, no. If, yeah, I, if I have it's an accident, it's murder. <clears throat> right. No, this if I have an accident because of this, and I. M Kill, 50, Kill 15 no, people. There's, no, there's not one versus 15 So it, it doesn't matter that it, it's one or... It's, how, it's the a misdemeanor. It, it, that's crazy. It's that a misdemeanor, crazy. and which means that the maximum penalty you could get is one year in jail, which, with good time, is automatically six months. And what's the argument for the, that? For like, who, who's coming against that? What's the reason? Well, some of the... And I think... That, I've been down to Charleston twice the last two years on this issue and, and for other issues, but, but with trying to push the banner for this. And the pushback I get is, well, you don't want to, if someone is doing something very innocuous and they cause an accident and, and there's a tragic result, you don't want to make someone a felon because of that. And that's a good, that's a good thing to consider. And that's why you put guardrails on it that, that those types of people aren't caught up in this law. And currently they're not because the Supreme Court has put sufficient guardrails that we're not uh, prosecuting people for simple negligent acts yeah. like going 56 and a 55 and right. there's an accident. You're not going to get charged under this. That's an, a true accident with a tragic result, and it's treated as such. I have, ter I have declined to prosecute cases that, that, that there was a fatality in based on the circumstances wow. because it, it didn't rise to the level of gross negligence where there was a wanton uh, disregard for human life. You have to be operating a vehicle so well, recklessly like you, you're disregarding human life. Who was your uh, main sponsor um, for, for this last session? Th this past year, it was Senator Weld. Okay. Well, I'd be happy to... To charge something from the and, uh, from the house. Well, and Paul here. Espinosa was wow. working with us on the house. Yeah. Well, you, that's a great person to lead the charge too. So.